Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to look at QuantLab in Python part two uh, with some new features, uh, how to export modules from Qlang, how to overload functions, and how to get tuples back uh, with information into Python. Okay, so how does this work? Let's start with modules. Okay, so we have coded something in our QuantLab developer um, editor and um, uh, functions that we want to use from Python and uh, we have placed them in modules uh, so we get a private namespace for our private functions or personal functions so we see we have a module called a rob funk and within this uh, module we have three uh, functions a a test pi test pi 2 and then we have two test functions so let's see uh, how that looks in Python. So we have import QL and then uh, we can ask for uh, the, the function. It, it turns up uh, as it would be a function uh, even though it's in the namespace. And then we get our function. So we can then uh, try our uh, function and see that it works. Okay, so that was the module part. So let's go on to the overloading. And uh, as you might have noticed, we have uh, the test function uh, in two versions, one with two strings and one with a string and a logical. So let's see uh, how that works. Uh, and what is new is that you can also then if you have option nullable uh, input arguments, obviously you don't have to pass these from Python. So you have two options. Either you write none, none, because they are nullable, uh, and that will call the first version of this function. Uh, but you can also omit uh, these none, because we will, f if there's a unique way of finding which function you're calling, then we will find that one. So to access the second part, we can write uh, none and then uh, also uh, true. And then we will access the second part. So this is how the overloading functions work in Python. We will try to find the correct version of your function. Uh, and if you have a nullable uh, input arguments in Qlang, you don't have to pass them at all in Python. Uh, so that's uh, everything about overloading functions. And then uh, for the last test, we're, let's switch to Jupyter Notebook and look at uh, the return tuples. So here we have an example uh, in which we ask for um, a name of a surface and we will return a matrix of number with the volatility surface for this uh, set of options. Uh, but we will also return uh, for which uh, moneyness and which maturities we have done this uh, calculated grid. So these are then out vector numbers in Qlang, which means that they will be returned in Python together with the return function, the matrix. So we can go to our Jupyter Notebook and then we have done import QL as before and we use the current date and we can then add the variables that we return and just ask for QL, get vault surface, ask for vault surface for date and a quote set. And we don't have to pass the option nullable vectors, um, so because these will be returned for us as they are out arguments in Qlang. So printing these will give uh, the matrix of volatilities and then the forward moneyness for which we calculate the smile and then the maturity, so uh, as to get uh, 0.1 year, uh, quarter of a year, half year, three quarters and one year. Uh, and as you see, it returns all these three uh, as a tuple, which is uh, new in, in the interface from QuantLab to Python. 
And that's it for today. Uh, welcome back for part three, where we look at debugging uh, QLang code used in Python. Uh, thank you very much.